Click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Hello friends, I welcome you all to this video. We are with the third video in this particular chapter. So as of now we have gone through the introduction what exactly the avalanche transit time mean and the complete family has been introduced there. Then we started with the very popular and the theoretical type of the impact mode that is in the previous video read diode. I hope the operation is very very clear to you people. Now in this video we shall be going through the various configurations under the heading of the impact diode. So let us begin with. So here we start with our impact diode as impact is the basic abbreviation of the impact ionization avalanche transit time devices here. So it is very very clear that these are the devices based on to the semiconductor platform and they have the junctions unlike the cases we have seen in the previous chapter and to this particular junction between the P and the N type having the different doping levels we have the use of reverse bias and because of the reverse bias there it is the avalanche effect is to take place the avalanche multiplication will be producing the high field region that has to be drifted from left hand side to the right hand side completing the device operation here. Now having the variation into the semiconductor structures we have the different configurations very first configuration we go with the figure so in this figure we have three parts taking the helping so here we have the first part to be p positive the middle part that has been represented here simply the n type semiconductor material and at the right hand extreme we have the use of n positive here so such type of configuration I say for the impact diode it's called as abrupt abrupt type of PN junction now below this semiconductor structure that has been represented we have the representation of the doping concentration levels so let us say this is the horizontal axis representing the device length here so for example if we take 3 micrometers to be the length of the device from this corner to this corner we can have the markings like from this particular junction if you take 0 1 2 and then 3 micrometer here so here in terms of per centimeter cube we have doping concentrations now for p positive and n positive region these are the most tallest columns that we have represented having the highest doping concentrations and these are of the order of here we have 10 raised to the power 20 per centimeter cube the charge carriers whereas the middle portion that is comparatively less doped simply the n type semiconductor material that has the doping level of the order of 10 raised to the power 16 charge carriers per centimeter cube is the unit here so this is the first configuration of the impact diode we have called it to be the abrupt pn junction we can take this to be the type a now we go for the next one in the next type we can mark it to be of b type here hence i mentioned b here we have the four semiconductor regions displayed into the structural diagram so we start with the structural diagram with the first semiconductor layer that is marked as p positive after p positive we have reduced doping level but the same extrinsic semiconductor hence we continue with p then we have a junction between p type and that of the n type here so which will be responsible for the reverse bias and generating the avalanche effect and finally the impact ionization avalanche transit time device operation will be covered to show the negative resistance and finally to generate the microwave energy lastly in the fourth one we have the representation of highly doped n type semiconductor hence we have the configuration as 
p plus p n and n plus so as like the previous case we have the doping concentrations represented in the next part of this particular diagram so here we take the distance as the measurement on this particular horizontal axis hence we have the markings here so the markings we start with zero for the first junction between the p positive and the p here then we have one two and three in terms of micrometers on the vertical axis we have the doping concentrations in terms of per centimeter cube here we have 10 raised to power 20 to be the order of the charge carriers and 10 raised to power 16 to be the order of charge carriers at the middle of this slope as we switch from p to n here so this type of configuration under the heading impact diode we name linearly graded pn junction so this was the second type of the configuration for the impact diode next we switch to the third and the last type to discuss for the impact diode configuration so in the previous configuration we had the four types of semiconductor materials used in the structural diagram here we have the three so let us say this is the third type c part here so we begin with very first of all the p positive here the semiconductor material that has been the majority carriers to be the holes here minority carriers to be the free electrons and it has been heavily doped here it is having the next region represented by the intrinsic material either we can denote it by small i or small p here and lastly at the right hand extreme here we have the representation of highly doped n type semiconductor we denote it by n positive so as before we have also represented the doping concentrations beneath this structural diagram we have the doping concentration labels with respect to the distance of the semiconductor substrate so for the first junction we mark zero here this is one two three so in terms of micrometers we have taken the device length here and onto the vertical axis we have the doping concentrations so simply i mention doping profile and in terms of per centimeter cube we have measured them so for p positive and n positive whatever we have the tallest columns those have the doping concentrations of the order of 10 raised to the power 20 charge carriers per centimeter cube whereas for the intrinsic type we have the concentration of 10 raised to power only 13 charge carriers into the single centimeter volume here so this is the third and the last configuration and this configuration is called as we have p dash i dash n diode so it can also be called as pin diode p for p type semiconductor material having the positively charged holes as the majority carriers intrinsic semiconductor that don't have any kind of impurity and lastly we have the n type semiconductor that has the free electrons to be the majority carriers so just now we have discussed the three configurations under the heading of the impact diode but i have already discussed it that the read diode that we have taken into the previous video is basically the first and the ideal type of the impact diode so with respect to the device operations up till now we have gone through the diode impedance we can express here so the diode terminal impedance we can represent by capital r and it can be expressed in terms of r suffix s added with twice capital l square divided by vd into es into capital a it has in multiplication to the ratio of 1 divided by here we have 1 minus omega square divided by omega s square in multiplication to 1 minus cosine of theta divided by theta here so in this expression several parameters we have represented onto the right hand side 
we express 1 by 1. So I mention here where we have the representation of RS. So RS represents the passive resistance. And this passive resistance is with respect to the inactive region. As we recall the structural diagram of the reed diode or any of the generalized impaired diode configuration, the last region is the inactive region. So this is the representation of the passive resistance with respect to that inactive region. After R suffix S, we have the representation of V suffix D to be the drift velocity of the charge carriers here. So I mentioned here it is the carrier drift velocity. Next to the drift velocity Vd, we have the next parameter used into the computation of this capital R. So that it is capital L. Here it is represented twice capital L square. That is the length of the drift region. So I just mentioned here drift length. After the drift length, we have the representation of capital A. So capital A denotes here the diode cross section. As far as the dimensions of the semiconductor diode are there, one dimension we have already used before that is the length of the drift region here. So taking the cross section into consideration, this is the cross sectional area represented by capital A. The use of epsilon suffix S. So epsilon represents the semiconductor permittivity. And lastly, the very important, the angular term that we have denoted that is given as theta. So this theta represents the transit angle. So as we have discussed before, transit time is the time taken by the charge carrier to travel the entire drift space or the distance between the two positions to complete the device operation. So when we take this particular transit time, multiply it with the help of the omega angular frequency, we get it represented in terms of the angle term that we have denoted as theta. So theta, the transit angle is simply represented omega into tau, tau being the transit angle. And using the simple formula of the transit time here, we have the representation of theta as omega into L divided by the drift velocity Vd. So this is also the simple and the most useful formula to deal with the several problems based on to the device operation. Now we know that the device is mostly used while keeping it inside the microwave cavity. Hence with respect to the resonance offered by the microwave cavity, we have the resonant frequency. So representing the angular resonant frequency, we denote omega suffix r computed as in the numerator we have twice alpha divided by vd into i0 in the denominator we express the multiplication of epsilon s into capital a and this complete ratio is having the power 1 by 2 it means it is inside the square root here so here as this resonant angular frequency is with respect to the device operation and basically the device operation has the avalanche effect. We can call this to be the avalanche resonant frequency also. So in this equation we have the term represented here alpha, Vd the drift velocity I0 the current, the cross sectional area of the semiconductor material, the permittivity are all well known and before we have explained them. Now alpha, the alpha is a derivative term and this is the derivation with respect to the ionization coefficient. 
and that of the electric field that has been applied so now the device name that is impact diode impact ionization avalanche transit time devices here so because of the avalanche multiplication whatever the free electrons or the holes here that are to be drifted from one end to the another end there it will be the ionization impact hence this particular parameter is to be considered while we formulate the various parameters of the device operation here so now in the formulae that we have just now discussed we have made the use of transit angle represented by theta now using this transit angle we can express the negative resistance offered by the device operation with the help of this diagram so in this diagram on the horizontal axis we take the transit angle so here we denote transit angle theta and the values we order from 0 then pi then 2 pi then 3 pi here and on to the vertical axis we take the negative resistance values and here it will be the maximum one we take it can be expressed 2 divided by pi at the maximum peak as shown in this particular diagram now here it is the linear rise as we go on increasing the transit angle and then the resistance value this particular slope shows us the negativity so the negativity here is represented by 1 minus cosine of theta divided by theta so this is representing this particular curve which is very very important and responsible for generation of microwave energy using the impact diode now we shall be concluding our impact diode topic with the help of the parameters computed output power and next to that we can be discussing the efficiency here so for representation of power we require the multiplication of the voltage as well as the current also so here we first of all express the voltage the voltage can be expressed as capital V suffix M denoting the maximum voltage and it can be obtained as the product of E suffix M into capital L here so E suffix M is the maximum applied electric field measured in terms of volts per meter and L is the drip length measurement of meters here so finally we get the voltage here so let us say this is equation number one as like it has the maximum voltage we can also express the maximum current the maximum current can be denoted as capital I suffix M and it can be expressed in terms of J suffix M into capital A where J suffix M is the cross-sectional current density measured in terms of ampere per meter square whereas capital A denotes the cross-sectional area measured into meter square so finally it will be in terms of the amperes so I name it equation number 2 further instead of having the J suffix M the cross-sectional current density we can make the use of Ohm's law and we can express it in terms of the conductivity also so this can be Sigma into capital E suffix M in multiplication of capital A as it is so GM is replaced by Sigma into capital E suffix M or we can also get it to the form that is epsilon s divided by tau into capital em into capital a or in terms of the drift velocity we can write it as vd divided by here we have capital l in the numerator we continue the multiplication of drift velocity with the es capital e suffix m the maximum and capital a the area so here we can get it to the equation number three also representing the maximum current now as we have the maximum voltage and maximum current now we can proceed to get the computation with respect to the power 
therefore the upper limit of the input power can be expressed as capital p sub x m as we shall be taking the help of i sub x m into v sub x m hence i offer small m as the suffix to the power representation so it will be equal to capital e sub x m that has been squared in the multiplication to epsilon suffix s into the drift velocity vd into the cross sectional area capital a so this will be the expression of the power here that i can outline here and this will be the next equation equation number four further with respect to this space charge region we can consider a capacitance generated here the capacitance can be mathematically represented as capital c and it can be obtained as the permittivity epsilon sub x s into a divided by capital l let it be the next equation number five here and using these equations we can express the product of capital p sub x m into f square is equal to capital e m squared into v d squared divided by 4 pi square into x sub x c here so in this expression capital x sub x c represents the reactive impedance of capacitive type finally the efficiency for the device can be represented by the equation here the efficiency is denoted by eta it is actually the ratio of capital p sub x a c to that of capital p sub x d c here hence we can get it to the form v a divided by v d so this is the applied a c voltage and this is the d c voltage in the multiplication to the ratio of currents i a upon i d here so this is the simplest formula computing the efficiency of the device so here we get it to the last equation equation number six so ideally whatever the parameters we have discussed so far for this device the efficiency can be obtained up to 30 percent but taking the practical limitations the efficiency that is observed less than 30 percent for this device by the next lecture we shall be addressing and practicing the problem number one based on to the impact diode i hope you enjoy the understanding and the practice of these problems for more information like this you can subscribe to ekeda channel thank you